Hey, I'm Kalash, and today I'm making Jack Skellington. I started by making a clay pumpkin. I rolled a bunch of foil into a ball and covered it all in polymer clay. Then I added some more clay in the middle to make it more pumpkin shaped rather than just a round ball. I split it into sections and then smoothed them out to give it those nice curves. Sadly, I realized this only after painting, but I forgot to give the pumpkin any texture whatsoever. And then added a little stem on top. I'm going to be putting LEDs in the pumpkin, so I carved out the bottom so I could remove the foil after baking. Of course, you can't make a Halloween pumpkin without carving it, so I gave it a little face. I was actually planning to make something else for this week, but since Halloween is coming up, I couldn't help myself from making something spooky. And if you're watching this after Halloween, well, there's always next year. Then I covered everything in some isopropyl alcohol to smooth out any bumps or fingerprints. After baking, I ripped the pumpkin's guts out. I was a little aggressive and its jaw broke, but I glued it on later. Now it's time to make the main character of the sculpture. I made an armature for his body, covered it in some foil, and then of course covered it with polymer clay. Making his arms and legs actually took a surprising amount of time, because even though they're very simple in design, getting them all evenly thick everywhere around was really difficult. While making the armature, I completely forgot about his neck, so I added a toothpick to help support the head. Since his whole design is so thin and minimalistic, it was quite easy to make the suit by just adding a few clay pieces and smoothing them into the rest of the body. I didn't add the bottom part of his suit yet because I wanted it to go over the pumpkin as he's sitting down, but it would be really difficult to do since I never have any proper places to mount my armatures. For his fingers, I took some very very thin wire and rolled some clay around it. Then divided them into skeleton finger looking sections and put them onto the hand. and then added some more clay around the wrists. Sadly, when making the armature, I didn't really think about the hands that I would be adding later, so his forearms ended up being way too long. Instead of fixing it right away, I just baked it anyway and cut his arms off, shortened the wire and stuck them back on. While making his feet, I realized how comically small his shoe size is compared to the rest of his body. After finishing up with the legs, it was time to make the head. I rolled out a ball that's a little bit smaller on top, since his head is not perfectly round, and poked two eyeballs in it. Then I added a little nose, which combined with the color of the clay makes him look absolutely horrifying. After smoothing out the nose, I gave him his skeleton looking mouth. Then I poked his head on and made the back of his coat. I later sat him down on the pumpkin and hit the cape with a heat gun just so it holds shape better while baking. The last thing to make for our friend Jack here is his little bow tie. Well, it's a pretty big bow tie, actually.
For zero, I just rolled out some clay and then squished it a bunch so it looks more like floating fabric. On a side note, I'm considering doing YouTube more seriously and putting more time into it. And I'm also considering opening a Patreon where I would post behind the scenes and other little previews. So if you would be interested in that, feel free to tell me because I would really appreciate the feedback. I made this super tiny pumpkin and squished it on his face. I then covered some very thin wires with clay for his ears and also stuck his head onto his body. Then the last detail left is his dog color. After all this crafting, it's finally time to get to the painting. The paint job is also quite straightforward, suit black, everything else white. The only thing really difficult about it was the lines on the suit. Thankfully, in the movie, the lines aren't perfect either, but I really tried my best to make the lines as straight as possible, but sometimes my hand just shook and something went wrong, and they are not as straight as I would want them to be, but they still get the job done. Then, after hours of painting white lines, it's time to fill in his eye sockets with some black paint. And I used a bit of a lighter grey to fill in his mouth as well. And his bow tie gets the same painting process, but it was a lot easier than the suit. And then everything will be held together with the help of some super glue. Zero also gets painted white. I actually have some glow-in-the-dark paint that I was thinking about using on him, but after you paint it on, it looks kind of like this pukish color, so I ended up not going for it. And then of course we have to make his little pumpkin nose an appropriate pumpkin color. Talking about pumpkins, it's time to paint the big one. I covered it in a few layers of orange and then glued down an LED. I also took this red filter that I had lying around and glued it in. The LED I'm using is white and this is gonna help the color look more red. I originally wanted to put the battery in the switch on the bottom of the pumpkin but I really hated how visible it was so I made two little pumpkins next to it instead. One of those pumpkins is also going to be hollow and I'm gonna keep all of the electronics in there. And I made a little cap for the bottom of the pumpkin so it's not that visible. I added a darker wash on all of the pumpkins. While I was waiting for that to dry, I also colored all of the stems green. And then went over the pumpkin with a few lighter tones to make it a bit more interesting. Then I stuffed all the wires in the side pumpkin and glued everything together with super glue. I would definitely recommend you scratching off the paint from the places you're gonna be connecting, otherwise it's not really gonna hold that well. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!